Dear friends and followers, today's question is another really important one. Joe, can you explain what is TCAS? This is a vital topic, especially if you want to become an airline pilot and you'll be dealing with this system a lot. So let's get started. Uh, 1383, runway 27, clear takeoff. In 2002, a tragic event happened in commercial aviation history. Two airplanes crashed in mid-air over Überlingen, a city close to Lake Constance in southern Germany. A Boeing 757 and a Russian Tupolev were on a collision course when the TCAS of both planes kicked in and the Tupolev pilot gave a false input. The air traffic controller requested the Tupolev crew to immediately start descending to a lower level, although the TCAS of the Tupolev ordered the crew to climb whilst the Boeing crew was ordered to descend. The Tupolev pilot followed the orders by the air traffic controller and also initiated the descent and disregarding the resolution advisory of his TCAS and a few seconds later both airplanes crashed in mid-air. So what does TCAS stand for? Get out your notebook and write down this abbreviation. TCAS stands for Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System. So let's talk about the traffic alert part of the system first. Commercial jets have to be fitted with a mode Sierra transponder. The transponder sends out signals showing the aircraft's position, altitude or flight level and current vertical speed. The TCAS scans the airspace around the aircraft for other aircraft fitted with such a transponder at a 40 mile radius horizontally and 9,900 feet upwards and downwards vertically. Therefore, the TCAS has two antennas fitted one at the top of the fuselage and one at the bottom. So the antennas are in a constant lookout for transponders of intruders because from the transponder signals, the TCAS determines for each intruder its relative bearing, its range and closure rate, its relative altitude if available. Why do I say altitude available? Because many little glider planes and other smaller aircrafts only have a mode alpha transponder, which only indicates their position and not their altitude, but more about transponders in another video. So once another aircraft gets into your TCAS airspace, this little diamond will pop up on the navigation display, showing you where the aircraft is and its vertical separation to your aircraft. So in this example, the airplane is at 2000 feet above you, above indicated by the little plus symbol, minus would obviously be below, but in this example, there is no imminent threat. The little arrow pointing down or upward indicates that the aircraft is either in a climb or descent relative to your aircraft. Now, in this picture, the little diamond has turned fully white, indicating a proximate intruder, meaning the other airplane is within six nautical miles radius, but no threat if it maintains its altitude separation. Now, the intruder is suddenly descending and the diamond turns to an amber dot. That's where the avoidance and collision system comes active. An oral warning is automatically called out. Traffic, traffic. Because the TCAS now indicates the other plane as a potential threat. The TCAS predicts a so-called closest point of approach within 40 seconds of the intruder. When the amber dot turns red, the TCAS predicts a closest point of the approach in 25 seconds and calls out for a resolution advisory for both airplanes. One of the airplanes will get the advisory to climb, climb, and the other descend, descend, to increase the vertical separation to each other. TCAS optimizes vertical orders to ensure a sufficient trajectory, separation and minimal vertical speed variation considering all intruders. Giving orders like adjust vertical speed, adjust or maintain vertical speed, maintain. And TCAS is a so-called memory item, meaning the entire procedure is done by memory. Starting with the call out, TCAS, I have control, and in case of the resolution advisor, you would call out autopilot off, 
flight directors off and follow the oral message and give the necessary rudder input and monitor your vertical speed. Most importantly is to give smooth rudder inputs to not create another TCAS alert with another plane in the vicinity due to an excessive vertical speed. After completion of the procedure, you resume back to your given flight level, activate your autopilot and your flight directors and notify ATC by saying, speedbird 1 to 5, clear of conflict. Now, you might ask how often does a resolution advisory happen? I've been in the airline industry for seven years now and I have received probably a TCAS alert every four to five months, but I've never had to actively avoid another plane by a resolution advisory. There are a few tricks on how to reduce the risk of a TCAS alert. Very often departure routes cross arrival routes, like in Munich for example. So you want to use vertical speed mode when approaching your first cleared level, because you already know that other airplanes are descending from above and will level off at a thousand feet above you, which is the minimum separation. But if you climb to your cleared flight level at an excessive climb rate, as you would do because the engines are much more powerful at lower levels, you decrease your climb rate by either flying it manually or use the autopilot's vertical speed mode. I've heard by many colleagues that this issue is a common problem with the Boeing 737 because it's so overpowered and it climbs like a rocket in the initial climb phase. Now you might ask, why do you turn off the flight director during that procedure? The flight director receives his orders by the FMGS, the Flight Managing and Guidance System, and the FCU, the Flight Control Unit. And because the resolution advisory is a non-normal situation for the FMGS and no inputs are made in the FCU during that procedure, the flight director bars would stay in place and would be more of a distraction in that situation than of any help. But more importantly, at the same time, turning off the flight directors will activate the autothrust into speed mode. Meaning that, for example, when the TCAS wants you to climb, the thrust will apply power to keep your speed during that climb or decrease the power in case of a descent. It's as easy as that, to be honest. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this basic introduction video about the TCAS system. There's more to learn about the TCAS in future videos, but I hope you got the basic principles of it. Thank you very much for your time. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, so click this button down here. And subscribe to my channel, so click the button right here. And spread the word <laughs> with your friends. All the best. Farewell, your Captain Joe.